good morning from central Milan. Now, I've been to several impressive stations over the last 12 months. Madrid, Atocha, Copenhagen, Hamburg, St Pancras, even King's Cross to a certain extent. But none of them have got the sheer massiveness, enormity of the Milano Centrale. Just uh, check, out, check out this the size of this thing. It's almost like the, the god of railway stations just plonked his foot on the ground outside Milan and said, there you go, have this massive station. Anyway, I'm taking a regional train down to Genoa and then I'm going across to Comoli. I hope that's how you pronounce it. I'm going to um, spend the day there having a look around. So come with me for the trip. Hope you enjoy it. Should take about three and a half hours, something like that. So I hope to take some good footage on the way and um, I'll see you in a little while. Cheers for now. Well, if you thought Milano Centrale was impressive from the outside, check out the interior. You simply must give yourself enough time to just stop and look around. The magnificent arch ceilings and wall friezes in the arrival hall are more reminiscent of a Parisian palace, in my opinion, than an Italian railway station. Now that's not surprising really, as the principal architect, Louis-Jules Bouchot, was actually French. Following this route, we enter the second, even larger hall. Um, look at the grand staircase ahead of you leading up to platform level, and then gaze up at the enormous roof above. Uh, the current station was opened in 1931, replacing the previous station of Porta Tosa. The terminus is used by approximately 120 million passengers per year, with 24 platforms underneath its large arched roof. Now these platforms are normally allocated to specific trains and it seemed to me like the high speed Frecchia Rocia and Frecchia Bianca trains were on the left hand side as you face the tracks. And needless to say, my train, which was a much less glamorous service, has taken me down to Genoa, was situated well away from these on uh, platform 20 something. And nevertheless, it was very clean on the inside and pretty quiet today. And note the current boarding procedure, by the way, which is one door for entry and one door for exit, alternately down the train. And that's Tren Italia's system to maintain social distancing at the moment. Um, unfortunately, and for the second time this year, I failed to get any video of the amazing signal boxes just outside Milan. So here's a photo I took as I left the station. I'm not sure if they're used anymore actually, uh, but if you know, please leave me a comment below. Okay, uh, well, I'm down here in the subterranean platforms at Genoa Principal, Principe. Um, not going to see much of Genoa, unfortunately. We're just waiting for the train out to Sestra Levante at 10.40. You can just see it behind me there. And that'll take me to Komomi. So I'll talk to you again a little bit later. The weather's looking pretty bad. Um, so at least we're dry under here. I'll speak to you in a bit. Cheers. <laughs> The weather was still pretty overcast as I made my way along the coast and eventually reaching my destination today which was the small fishing village of Caboli.
Hey guys, well I'm here at Kamoli and the rain has not yet appeared, which is good news. Not the brightest of days, the train's just left. There's um, lots of backpackers here, seems quite popular, even with the current situation. So anyway, I'm going to head down to my accommodation for the night, which is an early check-in, which is great. I'm going to chill out and explore the town, so I hope you'll come with me for that, and I'll see you later. Cheers for now. Now the first thing I noticed about Kamoli was the decorative style of the buildings. Now I googled this afterwards and uh, apparently it's an artistic technique called trompe l'oeil. I'll just put that in text below in case I'm pronouncing it wrong. But basically it gives the optical illusion of a three-dimensional object. Now you do have to get pretty close to notice that the walls of the houses are indeed quite flat. The narrow streets of the fishing village led me to the promenade with fantastic views of the Castle della Dragonara at the far end of the beach. Now I'm a massive fan of the trip with Steve Coogan and Rob Brydon so I just had to take a picture of myself outside the Hotel Cenobio de Dogi which is one of the locations that they filmed the Trip to Italy series a few years back. Unfortunately it was outside my price range on this particular occasion. The weather had really improved actually by this time and so after checking in I was able to spend a bit of time on the beach uh, before heading back up to the station to catch another train. Okay guys, I am on my way to a cable car in Rapallo name of the town. It's just south of Camogli where I'm staying. And it's going to take me up to um, one of these hilltop monastery type things. Looks a bit scary on the pictures I've seen on on the internet so uh, wish me luck. I don't know how high it is off the ground yet so I'll take a few uh, shots when I'm in the car itself and um, you can judge for yourselves I guess. I'll see you when I get to the top. The cable car starts off fairly sedately, you're passing over some really posh houses where the people sit in their gardens and show off to the peasants, gazing longingly at them from the gondolas above. The real action, I guess, starts after you make it past the top of the first hill. There's only two gondolas on at any one time, one goes up and the other one comes down. That passes you around about the halfway point, by which time you're soaring above the tree-clad mountain below. Now check out the cats, just lazing around on the lawn, they're so chilled out. And after exiting the station I headed up to the monastery, which was really the main reason for the cable car being built in the first place. I bought this new camera and um, this is about as much action as you're going to get from this camera <laughs> as far as I'm concerned. Walking up um, this path behind the sanctuary that I've just visited. It's an incredible path, it goes on for miles and it's interspersed with these little shrines um, to, to various saints um, I would imagine. I'm not really an authority on this kind of thing to be honest but somebody's put these here and it must have taken a long time they've built the path out of uh, stone and 
well whatever whatever they can um, manage to find from the mountain side I would imagine pretty big effort and um, talk about effort it's about all I'm gonna manage I'm gonna head back down to the cable car in a bit I think it probably goes um, on the half hour so yeah take it back down to uh, Hapalo and um, the train back to Camogli I think and have another mutual rain there I'll catch you in a little while I took in the beautiful views of the Portofino Peninsula before heading back to the cable car station. No music for you this time, just enjoy the scenery, and I certainly did. Now, interestingly, each car has an operator with you for the whole trip. I found that quite reassuring. There's also a ladder so you can get onto the roof and I guess you can lower yourself to safety on a very long rope. I never had to do this, uh, but in my imagination I'd probably crawl along the cable like James Bond being chased by Jaws, but in reality I'd probably carry shaking in the corner of the precariously swinging car, just waiting to be rescued by the local helicopter crew. The worst part for me was when the whole car judders when it goes over the pylons holding the whole thing up. I hate that, it always feels like it's going to come off. What's your most terrifying ride in a cable car? Do let me know in the comments below. Well, by the time I got back to Camoli, it was cooling down and people were starting to eat. I don't think it's anywhere near the most touristy place along this stretch of the coastline and that suited me just fine. I do imagine though that it would be still very busy in normal times. Have you ever been to this part of the world? Let me know where you would recommend in the comments below. For me, the harbour area was the place to be, with a really relaxed vibe. I was staying on the far side of the harbour in a wonderful boutique hotel called Locanda y Tremurli. You eat outside about as close to the water's edge as you can get. It's a truly beautiful setting, with lovely owners and excellent rooms that also overlook the boats. There's a magnificent viewpoint up at the castle where you can look back at the beach area and watch the sunset over the Ligurian Sea. And walking out along the harbour wall led to some beautiful views from the light back towards Camoli. Imagine in the late Middle Ages this was a significant seaport with hundreds of tall ships sailing in and out of this narrow harbour entrance. The colours of the houses really stand out at this point and it is actually thought that these colours helped the fishermen out at sea to find their way back to port. Oh, what a beautiful place. Okay guys, well I hope you've enjoyed the footage I've been taking today. I've seen a little bit of Camogli, 
and been up the cable car which was great I really enjoyed that uh, there's only um, a couple of stops down the line actually and um, so it's well worth the trip if you're in this neck of the woods I've had a really good day and the weather has turned out to be absolutely fantastic just cooling down a little bit now I'm gonna go and get something to eat well, thanks for watching uh, please subscribe if you like this kind of stuff I'm heading down to Pisa tomorrow on the train I might stop two or three times on the way I think depending on what I see and um, yeah, gonna have a little look around there. Never been to Pisa before, so thank you very much for watching this. And please subscribe and leave any comments below if you enjoy this kind of thing. That would be very much appreciated. I really do read everything that you put down there. So thank you very much, and um, I'll see you again. <laughs> Thank you.